Sunday. Welcome back to the sewing room. I am down here getting ready for the live hangout. It is the day of live hangouts. It's mine from 12 till 4, then Rachel's from 4 till 7, and then Andrea's from 7 till 8. So lots of sewing entertainment coming at you today. I am still in the cutting out mode. I spent yesterday editing and I think Friday editing as well. No, Friday I was cutting out, yesterday was editing. I was going to come down and cut out the rest of the Cobra Corsage, but I realised that there was so much work to do on the Sew Along video to get it out on time, so I did that instead. Which is good, because I'm really pleased with how that one's come out. It's all still set up in cutting out mode down here, so I'm going to get the sleeves for the Lazon and the Sorrento jacket cut out of the slippery lining. Then I'm going to get the Cobra Corsage Kiwi and Burgundy cut out as well. I think it's going to work. There's going to be quite a lot of ironing. I was thinking maybe I ought to do that first. So I probably ought to stop waffling at you and just get on and get it done. Yeah, let's do that. I shall be back later to show you how I got on today. It's Mother's Day here in the UK and James and I went halves on a bouquet of cupcakes. These are actual cakes and I'm very much looking forward to eating a couple of them later. Good morning lovely peeps, happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the sewing room. I am not having the week I planned, but never mind. Never mind. I am going to get the three quarter circle skirt cut out of the Mulberry Cobra Corsage Viscose. Then I can change the room back into sewing configuration and get on with some actual sewing. I think I will sew up the circle skirt first because it's going to need to drop on the bias. I'm hoping I can get some bias binding from the fabric as well. I think I should be able to. There's gonna be some like decent sized shaped pieces from the sides of the circle skirt to cut out for bias binding because I have the circle skirt to use it on and then also the 5951 dress to use it on as well. So that's the plan. Get the circle skirt and the bias binding cut out, then move back to sewing configuration and get some start getting the rest of the Cobra Corsage sewn up. Definitely not going to finish it by the end of March because it's currently the 29th of March today. Might even be the 30th. In fact, I think it is the 30th. So uh, yeah, definitely not going to finish the Cobra Corsage collection <laughs> in the first first quarter of the year, but never mind. Never mind. I technically, I didn't really start it until February. So, yeah, <laughs> I think that's understandable. Anyway, enough waffling, more cutting out. I shall see you in a second. One eternity later. I have the skirt pieces cut out and the bias binding made and I managed 17 meters. So fingers crossed that's going to be enough to hem the three, three quarter circle skirt to do the side seams or the back seams of the skirt and then the skirt of the dress the skirt of the dress hem as well and the hem on the sleeves and then anything that the bruyere shirt should need as well so yeah 17 meters out of all the kind of little off cuts which is pretty good there is a little f a few other pieces over there that if i need any more i can make into bias binding but they were much smaller so i thought i'd stick with this lot so now this is done i'm going to get on with sewing up the skirt pieces and of course i will be french seaming those so i'm going to put you on a time lapse whilst i get that done as i mentioned i I'm going to sew up the skirt pieces first because they will drop on the bias and they do do that. I have been getting a lot of questions about bias binding. Now as I have mentioned many many times I don't really enjoy making bias binding. I am finding that I'm enjoying using matching bias binding on my lightweight viscose projects like the magnolia dresses and also now this cobra corsage. One of the questions I've been getting asked a lot is what width bias binding I make and it very much depends on what I will be using it for. Majority of times I make two inch or I cut out two inch wide strips to make a half inch wide bias binding when all the folds have been put in with the little bias tape makers that I use. These are the doodads that I'm talking about. I will list them in the description down below. I absolutely love these things. I think they're brilliant. I know Simplicity, I think it was Simplicity, made an automatic bias tape maker. And if I can get my, if I can find one to get hold of, I would love to get myself one of those gadgets. But these little handheld metal tape makers that I got from Amazon do the job brilliantly. And I really, really like them. I do sometimes do one and a half inch wide bias binding. And that's the size of the strip that you cut before you turn it into bias binding. One and a half inches wide, I think gives you three eighths of an inch. I think I have that right. 
probably don't. <laughs> um, but I don't really like using anything that's smaller than that, just because I find it really fiddly to make and really, really fiddly to use. Sometimes I will make slightly smaller bias binding, especially mum used them the other day to make quarter inch wide tape with the edges folded under. That was to use as stems for applique on a quilt, but I, I don't think I would use that for dressmaking. I much prefer the sort of half inch wide bias binding that I can get from the two inch wide strips. So hopefully that's answered the question that I get, I'm getting asked most often about the bias binding. I have finished the three quarter circle skirt and the five nine five one. I think I have that number right. Five nine five one. I finished the skirt for that as well. That one does drop on the bias a little bit. I have cut this one slightly differently. Usually it has a center front seam on the skirt. The grain line goes down the center of the skirt so that the center front seam is slightly off grain. But because this is, whilst it's a busy print, it is a large print and I didn't want there to be a really obvious seam down the front. So I've actually amended it to cut it on the fold. I don't know how that's going to affect the fall of the skirt, but my other two are I mean, it's an experiment. We'll see. We'll see. I think it'll be fine. I think it's going to be fine. But the the other two skirts that I've made did drop on the bias a little bit. So I have just got both of the skirts up there so that they can do their biasy things. And I'll start making the bodice for the 5951 tomorrow because it is about half past five. So I'm going to call it a day down here. I have a bunch of editing to do if I want to get this video up for tomorrow and then also the spring fabric haul video up for Saturday because that's a long one because there's a lot of fabric. <laughs> when is there ever not a lot of fabric in my fabric hauls? I mean it's not even a haul is it because none of it's new. Haul kind of implies new in but um, fabric that I want to use and patterns that I'm thinking about using for them. So yeah I need to get both of those edited edited, edited, edited and up so that you guys can watch them. So I hope you've enjoyed the very brief little bit that I filmed on Sunday and today. It's um, definitely been one of those kinds of weeks but never mind. I will be back hopefully to regular productive levels of sewing from tomorrow because I am really looking forward to seeing how this dress turns out. It's, it's gonna be a good one. Anyway, on that note, I'm gonna say goodbye, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.